Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. Happy New Year to everyone. Hope you had a safe season, holiday, Christmas holiday, New Year holiday, Hanukkah, whatever you want to call it. Hope you had all a good time and you were safe and spent it with friends and family. But I'm back in 2024 and as things happen in the world of Woodworking Masterclass, things are never the same. As you can tell by the mess behind me, I've got a lot of things happening. I've just finished off some marquetry. So we're just waiting for that to dry. So that's uh, the rear side of the bed that I'm making. It's been on the go for about six years. So I've decided I'm finally getting into doing the marquetry. I thought this year was going to be really easy. All I'd be doing would be making harps or developing harps, making rattling chopping boards and beehives. Then one of my grandsons, Anthony, decided I want to take up archery, Papa. So luck would have it, there is an indoor archery range just up the road from where we live. And we went there a couple of times and uh, it's unique apparently. It's the only one in Australia that does archery uh, this way. And seeing I take him up twice a week, I'm sitting there watching and you're right, I got sucked in. The same way as I got sucked into doing blacksmithing. Oh, Papa, I'd like to do blacksmithing. So I get involved and all of a sudden he dribbles off, doesn't want to do it anymore, but I'm hooked. So I love blacksmithing. In fact, I got into martial arts with my own kids exactly the same way many, many years ago. They wanted to do it and I had to take them in, so I thought, well, I might as well do it whilst I'm there. But that's a story for another day. So we sort of got involved in archery and what, uh, what we're doing because it's an indoor um, archery range. By the by, I'm actually building an indoor archery range in the shed next door to here. Uh, that big air conditioning unit's going. That one down there, the split one. Uh, I'll put a case around there. So we don't put any arrows into it, but basically, from here to here, from here to the end, is nine metres, which is going to be pretty, pretty good, I think. There, yeah, that's the beginnings of the archery range. We've got to put the drop cloths in, the stop cloths. I've got to build another wall to make it longer and we can extend it to 12 uh, metres if we want to. The archery club that we belong to now is just up the road and they use horse bows which are Turkish bows, Korean bows. They're shorter than the long bow. They're not a compound bow. Uh, basically, I believe it's what they call a bear bow. It's, it's traditional. So I started looking at those and then I thought, oh, I might as well go and buy one. So I bought one. And yeah, down the track, I'm going to have a crack at making a bow. So I'll video that as well. Uh, today, this is some of the things we've been making. <sighs> Quivers. For the arrows, and here's one I'm just finishing off for myself. It's burnt Japanese cedar, a yakasugi finish, which is like crocodile skin. Really, really nice. So with these, I thought, well, we might start making um, bows. So I bought this bow thinking, oh, I'll just have a look at it. It's only a cheap one, and uh, I'll see if I can copy the design and, and go from there. But in the meantime, here it is here. It's what they call a recurve bow. So when you string it, it actually comes back this way to use it. Uh, it's a 30 pound bow. But rather than having it just look like a normal bow, what I want to do is on the ends, they do have a special name of which I am ignorant at the moment. I heard it this morning and I've forgotten it. But what I thought I'd do is pretty it up and use my Litchin graph machine and put some lightning in there. So that's what this video is. Uh, Personalising a 
manufactured bow, if you like. So, off we go. First things first, I've got to sand these ends just to get the lacquer that um, was on there when I bought it. So I'm going to do it a quick scuff with some 120 and then a bit of 180, then finish off with 320. That should do the job, I think. I could have actually gone to a hundred grit with this. It might have been a little bit quicker, but it gets gets taken off quicker, but then it's longer to fix all the scratches too. Might as well do it. All on the same one, and then I'll do the other end. So that's done it. 120, which is pretty good. Now I'm going 180. Slippery little sucker. Then a quick little hip with 320. And that's one end done. Okay, this is the second side, a bit of a hit with 320, and I don't know what effect the electrolyte's going to have on this. Some timbers, it makes it go a yellowy colour, which I've actually used on a harp. I made the harp and had, I um, don't know if I've got a picture of it. Now that is New Guinea rosewood but when I put the electrolyte on it it went that beautiful tanny sort of color so this might go the same and if it does well that's good too we'll we'll use it there we go as I said before this Lichtenberg machine I had built specifically for me from someone in um, the states it's not a cowboy one stay away from people that want to tell you you can do it using a microwave oven because it will kill you, literally. This uh, will run at 12 to 13,000 volts, but it's 30 milliamps. And when you get a zap, it's just like a pin sticking in you. If you use the um, microwave ones or any other of these cowboy built ones, they can have up to 50 amps and they can kill you. Now the idea with this is you put you put the electrolyte on and then wipe it off. So there's just enough moisture in there to do what we want it to do. Put both the electrodes on. And so far that's looking all right. Now, do the other end. And here we go again. <coughs> It'll keep going until it meets. As soon as it looks like it's going to meet, I'll separate them so I get a separate pattern and just not one long one. amazing how it works and you can't pick what direction is going to go all right a little bit of 240 just putting masking tape around here I'll give it a quick spray, give it a good shake, and I know I meant to do this in a well ventilated area, but it's only a quick little spray.
And there we have it. I'll leave this on um, for a little bit and then I'll give it another coat. And we should be good to go. All right, next day. And I gave it another coat last night. I've just given it a bit of a polish and a wax. And for my money, it's come up like bone. It really is quite nice. So, all I've got to do now is string it and loose some arrows off because we did a bit of work on the target range yesterday. So here we go. Boom, boom. Put this one on the bottom like that. Let's pop that down there. Oh, it's not, not very elegant. And I'm sorry you can't see exactly what I'm doing. We'll bring it right back to there. And there we have it. Ready to go. And put some arrows. Whoop, wrong way. And Anthony would be telling me that all the time. There you go. Put this in there like that. And it's time for me to pull the shed door down and saying, look after yourself, be kind to each other and remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. And yes, we do have warning archery in progress, so we're keeping that safe too. So until next time, I look forward to having your company in the workshop at the workbench very, very soon. Till then, take care. God bless. Bye for now.